Hello, welcome to this podcast on muscles of the back. My name is Maz Asfar. And again, we're going to start by um, separating the different compartments at the back. The first compartment is the superficial compartment. Let's start with the latissimus dorsi muscle. Now its proximal attachment is the spinous processes of T7 to T12, as well as the lower four ribs, iliac crest, and the sacrum. This means there are different um, parts of this muscle, so just be aware of that. And its distal attachment is the floor of the bicipital groove of the humerus. Its innervation is the thoracodorsal nerve, which uh, you could remember from the podcast on um, the brachial plexus. Now its function or action, and it has several, is add to adduct, extend, and medially rotate the arm at the so shoulder joint. The next muscle is the trapezius muscle. Now as you can tell, there are several attachments, proximal attachments for this muscle. Let's start with the occipital protuberance, which you can see in this diagram here. It's basically just a bony line mark on the external surface of the occipital bone. The next one is the superior nuchal line, which you can see by the two arrows here. It's basically just the curve line on the external surface of the occipital bone. The next one, the next one is the ligamentum nuchae, which is demonstrated here by the long arrow. And finally, the spinous processes of C7 to T12. Now this muscle attaches to the lateral third of the clavicle, the acromion, and the spine of the scapula, which is very well demonstrated here in this diagram. This muscle is innervated by the spinal accessory nerve and its function or action is to adduct, elevate and depress as well as rotate the scapula. <clears throat> Levator scapulae, it's quite a simple one this. Its proximal attachment is the transverse processes of C1 to C4. Its distal attachment is the medial aspect of the scapula and it's innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve. And its function is to elevate the scapula. The rhomboid muscles. Let's start with the rhomboid minor. Its proximal attachment is the nuchal ligament, which we discussed earlier, the spinous process of C7 to T1, and the distal attachment is the medial aspect of the scapula. It's innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve, and its function again is to elevate the scapula. And the rhomboid major, proximal attachment is spinous process of T2 to T5, and its distal attachment is the medial aspect of the scapula. And again, it's innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve. Its function or action is to adduct the scapula. Let's move on to the intermediate compartment of the muscles of the back. Let's start with the serratus posterior superior muscle. Now, unfortunately, because of the awkward position of this muscle, we couldn't find a suitable image. So let's just discuss the attachments. The proximal attachment is the ligamentum nuchae and its spinous processes of C7 to T3 and its distal attachment is ribs 2 to 5. It's innervated by the intercostal nerves of T1 to T4, and its function is mainly to help elevate the ribs. The serratus posterior inferior, its proximal attachment is the spinous processes of T11 to L2, and its distal attachment is the lower aspect of ribs 9 to 12. This muscle is innervated by the intercostal nerves of T9 to T12. This muscle helps to depress the ribs. 
So that concludes the intermediate compartment. Let's get the deep compartment of the muscles of the back. Now I felt that this is quite advanced uh, medical undergraduate level, but if you're interested to look at the deep muscles of the back, you can look at the splenius capitis and caversis, the erector spinae, which is consists of three muscles, the iliocostalis, longissimus, and the spinalis muscles. And finally, the semi-spinalis muscle. Again, use our system of identifying the proximal and distal attachments, the innervation, and finally the function or action. Thank you for joining us and join us next time for some more anatomy podcasts.